Hi everybody, uh, I'm Dan and I do YouTube for a living. It's actually my full-time job and I say full-time because it's, it's all the time. It's literally when I'm not making videos and actually on my computer, I'm on my phone. So I'm the person that you hate who's in, in a restaurant with you on my phone all the time. Get off your phone, you know, we're, we're dining together or whatever, but it's, it's my job. I have to do it all the time, so people nag on me a lot for it, but it's, it's, it's what I gotta do. I gotta, gotta keep up to date with social media and stuff like that. So my channel is called Ready Up Live, and I've amassed 14.5 million views and 99,000 subscribers. So that's, that's right near 100,000, and it's kind of upsetting that I'm not there yet, but it's like 200 away now or something, and it's right there, and I wish I could be like, yeah, I have 100,000 subscribers, but I, I don't yet. It's, I would be lying to you. <laughs> it's come close. I'm almost there. So that's pretty exciting. Um, but I do video game stuff mainly, and it's been a channel since 2007, but it really kicked in in 2012 is when I became a YouTube partner and I started getting ad revenue. So I started making money off videos in 2012. I thought that was really cool. So this thing that was just my hobby, I was releasing videos just for the fun of it and just for just whatever. I just felt like doing it. And then as soon as 2012 hit, suddenly I realized this was a thing. And it's really, really funny seeing how people perceive it. Because even in my first year of university, and especially in high school, I used to make videos and I would always keep it on the DL. Because anytime I would tell someone about it, they'd be like, you know, most of the time, even looking in their eyes, you could tell just they would glaze over and go, oh, like that's really cool. I'm proud of you. And then suddenly now everyone seems to know that YouTube is a real thing and a real job. And people know that people make millions and millions of dollars off being YouTubers. And so it's no longer, I don't know if I've ever met someone in the past year who didn't think you can make money off YouTube. I can, I'll meet anyone. They go, really? That's so cool. I, like, I, I know. You know, I've, I've known this forever. Like, I've, I've enjoyed this forever. Why couldn't people think about this back then? But so, I wanted to do a project that revolved around my job, and my project was to create and measure the growth of a YouTube vlog series. I could have created an entirely new channel and totally measured everything about it. Totally measured growth from the ground up. But I figured I'd rather make it more about growing what I already have, more about catering to my existing audience and seeing what they like and learning about what, they, what, what they're interested in and how I, can, how I can grow from that. So I made a vlog series, as I said, and a vlog is a video blog or video log. Sometimes some people call it vlog. I never hear vlog, it's usually vlog. And it's a web television. So anytime you see anybody on YouTube or anything, talking in front of a camera, it's almost always considered a vlog. Essentially just, you know, you see lots of cuts and stuff like that, it's just people talking to cameras on the internet for the most part. So my strategy for this was step one, research. I looked at a lot of top YouTubers. I looked at people like Philip DeFranco, saw what they were doing, what their audience liked, what kind of words they said, what catchphrases they said, what did they do to make people comment, to make people subscribe? How many times did they say, hey, like this video? The littlest things like that are surprisingly effective, and I'll, I'll show you the stats as they come up, but I paid attention to every word these guys said because they were all important. The next thing was interesting topics. I really wanted to have topics that would engage people because, again, I'm catering to my existing audience here, so they'll see it pop up in their feed, and I want them to click that video. So I made sure whatever the topic was of every single video really, really interesting. Something that just would grab your attention and go, I want to know what that's about, and click on it. And I want to encourage interaction, so rather than just watch the video, which anybody can do, and it's not that hard to get views, I wanted people to comment. I want people to like, subscribe, share with their friends. There's so many things you can do to just, you know, actually have this community of people and interact with people and have them influence what the next video is going to be about. And convince returns. So for the first time ever, which was different about this project, is I made a schedule for myself. I made it so that every Monday I would release a new video. Never in my YouTube career have I done this. I don't know why people have always been, do it, you know, have a schedule, make sure people know when videos are coming out, but I just never did it. I've been too busy with school, too busy with things, maybe it's all just excuses, but I never had an actual schedule until now, so it was really interesting and difficult to be like, all right, every Monday a vlog is coming out. Check it. So, I'm going to give you guys an example. It's about three minutes long of, it probably for the most part, it's not going to be very coherent as much as just clips from the total of 11 videos I made for this project.
summary of the 11 videos I made. It was, uh, it's interesting, I never actually see those kind of things in front of a live audience, so it's kind of weird. <laughs> um, so here's some stats. So YouTube has a really, really powerful analytics system, and I can track pretty much everything about everybody who watches my videos, and it's pretty crazy. So there's a few key things I focused on, which I'm gonna show you here. Um, this is gonna look a little nicer in about one slide, so don't worry about how messy this is. This is what I used to keep track of all these things. I made some, I didn't think about it before I started, about how awkward and insane it would be to handle this big Excel sheet of how many views things got. So I managed 24 hours. I want to see how quickly things got views. And I did every week from then on out the growth you see. So I want to see how it slowed down, maybe if something picked back up, etc. So views was a big thing. And like count, I want to see how many likes I could get on videos. And comment count. So here's what I found from these stats. And this was probably the most interesting finding of the whole thing. Uh, I was most fascinated with what one video of all of them would get the most views, what would get the most likes, and what would get the most comments. Because if I were to guess, 
I would have thought at least one of them would have had both categories, at least two categories. One, you know, most views, most comments, most views, most likes, etc. All of them were different, and that's really surprising to me. So my most views with 8,008 was my Minecraft video. So that gave me so much insight into my audience. Because again, a lot of this stuff wasn't really found, for the most part, via search engines or anything. It was entirely my existing audience. I'm trying to convince them to watch something new on the channel. And Minecraft, I already had this existing huge Minecraft audience, so I knew they would like this video, but it was the, the highest viewed one. So it's just, you know, proved to me that those are the viewers. The viewers are there. However, not the most likes. The most likes was on one where I talked about YouTube as a job. And there's a lot of interesting things there because I actually changed my camera for that specific video. I totally upgraded, I think, um, my camera. But I just used a different camera, used a different camera angle. I did a few different things. And for all I know, that could have had an effect. That could have made people see me in a different light because even different frame rates, different angles on people can totally change how you perceive what they're telling you. But at the very least, they liked the message I had to say there and that one got the most likes. And my most comments was one about Halo. So my channel started as a Halo channel, so I knew that was gonna be also a big thing. Halo and Minecraft were both gonna be really big, but obviously it was the most vocal. So I learned so much about my audience here that the people who view the most, but don't necessarily comment, so a lot of them, and I know this for a fact, a lot of Minecraft people, maybe even younger, don't even have YouTube accounts maybe, would just watch it, you know, watch it at a friend's house, things like that, and not comment, not like, because they maybe can't even do that because they don't have an account to do so. But the Halo guys are a lot more veteran YouTubers who absolutely, if there's a topic about Halo, they are in there and they're going to comment on it and they're going to dispute it to the death. So it, it assured me that I was right on some of these things, but I was definitely surprised on, I think the most likes one definitely really, really surprised me. So here's some cool stats. Uh, so again, this is only a slice of all the cool stuff I can get from YouTube, but I thought this was one of the most interesting ones. And focusing on the Minecraft one, because it had the most views, and here it's actually a little more than said there, an extra couple of views, but you can see that the US dominates, kind of, I don't know how well you can see that, it's kind of blurry. Um, yeah, but the US absolutely dominates my viewership, which is interesting. So I would think that, you know, I'm in Canada, maybe I would get some more Canadian views, but Canada's actually third. So that's really weird to me that Canada's not even the second place viewership. Uh, but something I found very interesting was, well, A, Estimated minutes watched is, that's crazy to me. 29,000 minutes is a long time. That's just for the one video. That's, I can't even, I don't know if someone can, is really good at math and can figure out how many like days that is, but I can't right now. But that's just something, something good. Um, but another interesting, interesting thing was um, average view time. So that's on the far right over there. That's people's attention span, essentially. What is the average time people just cut off? People were bored of the video and just left. And it's interesting to see who had the highest and the lowest. And the highest was things like Saudi Arabia down there, where like seven people from Saudi Arabia watched it. And they had the highest attention span. Why? I have no idea. I, I don't even, never know what to make from attention spans. Like I would expect the US to be the lowest or something, but it's, that's just something interesting. I find that one of the most fascinating statistics of all of them. The Red Line. What a menacing title. So you notice here, I have a red line. I went, I set out to make a video every week, every Monday, and there's one I missed. One I missed, and it taught me a lesson, which, which I'll get to. But that is the day I, I didn't do one. So that really kind of messed up my chart. So I had to make it really obvious to myself that I had this great like pyramid thing going, and then it all got messed up halfway through, and it got more confusing, and I didn't make that mistake again. But lesson one was prepare. So I made the mistake of thinking I could do it at the last minute and just release this video, but it was getting late and I was out with my family and my family's crazy and we, it's, it's just, it's a great fun time with my family, but it's just like, this isn't going to happen tonight. Like I'm just, I was in Banff and there's a picture of that. We were just having fun too and just having a grand old time and that's just, at that point I was just like, I'm going to draw a big red line. I couldn't, it's not going to happen. Um, random tangent here, there's a phone. I, on this table, because we were at this restaurant that you could just call other tables around the restaurant. I don't know what the original purpose was, but it was one of the most fun I've had in a restaurant ever. You can just like dial a number and it would just call a random table and then I would just duck down and then everyone else would like, like scope for me and there'd be people at other tables like picking up, like trying to find who's calling them in the restaurant. Like, I don't know, it was great. I want to do that all the time though. <laughs> so um, because of the red line, I prepared 
for the next video, I made sure that I had it ready to go. So you can see that was actually the earliest release because it was set to go uh, because I was actually entirely out of the country for this next video. I was in Seattle actually when this one came out. So I made it, had it ready to go, and I set it to upload at 10 a.m. YouTube would just let it go. And it's kind of scary when that happens because you don't know. I can't fix anything. If anything goes wrong, I'm, I'm screwed. Right? Like I can't, there's nothing I can do. I'm, I wasn't on my phone much. And I was just, so you hope everything's smooth while it, while it uploads automatically. But yeah, so here I was. I was in Seattle. I was actually at Microsoft. Um, I'm a Microsoft MVP. It's most, most valuable professional. And it's just the people who are experts in the area. So I'm an, an Xbox MVP. And these are all the Xbox MVPs. We're doing like a crazy selfie shot over here. Actually, it's kind of funny. <laughs> but that's what I was doing for that. So I had to ready to go. So I mentioned the camera change before. And I actually, I want to research this a little more. So I do think switching the camera angle, bringing it a little closer. Actually, this was only 24 frames per second. That one's 29 frames per second. Something like that. You can actually have a little more subtle emotion with an extra frames per second. So that's something that I'm definitely going to look into more and that maybe that had a big effect because uh, people, again, that one on the right, the most liked video, which is fascinating to me. So here's mild language, um, but this is a really funny comment I got on that video. So glad I watched this. I thought you were a douche. Now not so much. Good luck Green Skull in this biz. Hope you do well. So however much this guy watched, I don't know, but the fact that he came in on this video and you know, took the time to write down a comment being like, I used to hate you, now you're okay. <laughs> right? Like, that's, right, good. Is it the camera? I think, right? That's gotta be. I don't know what else would have make someone switch their mind like that so quickly. Um, but a really important part, as well as the, like, the headline, the title that made people click, is the thumbnail. Because some people don't even read the headline, they wanna see that picture there that's just like, oh, it draws them in. So I would take stills, from the video, take my favorite ones, and then I put them all together and choose my favorite. So out of these are some of them, and then that's what we come out to. Here's every thumbnail I made in the entire thing. So if I didn't have that red line, I would have 12, and it would be this perfect collage with this little green space down there, and that's upsetting. But yeah, so you can see I started with something a little more simple, and then I came up with this style that I liked a lot better. The entire black on the left side, no distractions, really bright text, so you can just see that. That pops out, you know, is 343 okay, Halo? I need to know about this. I'll click it and comment on it, because that was the most commented. And on the right, you got a little picture, some kind of emotion, right? So I got the thumbs up, and I got something, something interesting there just to draw people in to what they're seeing. And yeah, that was, uh, that was my project. I was actually really happy with it. It came out pretty cool. I learned a ton. And it, I don't know if I'm surprised or not that there's certain things that happened exactly as I expected and certain things that were kind of strange, like the camera change thing that people really liked it, like that really threw me off and I don't know how to feel about that. I'm gonna think about that a lot still. But just as I expected, um, not many people like found these videos. It was entirely for my existing audience and it was making trying to get these people that were already there to watch something that they weren't really used to and get them to enjoy it and like interact with it. But yeah, that was, uh, that was my project. So if any, any comments, questions? No, actually, I made, actually, both these are mildly different. Um, they, um, they were made specifically for this show. So it was just a big collage of almost all videos. Yeah. I don't think so. No. No. That's once in a lifetime. Or is this something that you want to reserve as kind of like trade secret? In, in what sense? Like what I what I share the information I learned, do you mean? Yeah, you do a show about um, how you track stats and oh guys, if you ever want to get into this field, these are some of the things that I've learned. I think at the very least, that's gonna be something that I help people with. Um, because I'm I'm really for 
helping anyone who's um, trying to get a, I got, I got, there's a point where I gotta get selective and like be like, I see something in this guy, I wanna help him out. So I know a lot of YouTubers that have even actually gotten bigger than me and just like blew up overnight kind of thing just because you know, potentially also a big part of it that, that I help them is I gave them all these suggestions because I'm like, I don't know, you know, some people say just never share all your secrets kind of thing, but I'm like, in the YouTube game, there's nothing to lose. There's absolutely nothing to lose in helping someone else because they're only gonna help you when they get bigger too. You just double your audience. So anything I learned here is not that I'm gonna, I'm not gonna just go out and just share it with the world, but you know, select people who I also want to, you know, Follow in my path and like maybe be like a partner in the future. Absolutely. I don't think I had that one planned. Um, actually, there was actually I had a few ideas. I would need to go look at them again. I can't remember. I definitely put down about uh, it's like between four and seven ideas that were just original ideas of what I would do for for vlogs. Uh, but a lot of these kind of just, just came up and I was like, that's the one, that's what it's gonna be, whether it be a day before or like right before I film it, like I would turn the camera on and be like, I know what I'm gonna do for this one, this is gonna be a good one, but yeah, so most of these weren't, to be honest, pre-planned very much as much as just, you know, right before, I was like, I need something, what is something that's just gonna really resonate with my audience, so it's, I honestly think maybe I, for the most part, kind of went downhill after the beginning, because I was struck really hard with these first two, there were some of the two of the best ones, the Halo one and the Minecraft one did really well, both of them. And then it was a little bit of a lull back until the YouTube one again, which was also really big. So, I don't know. <laughs> like I wish I, I couldn't tell you what that, what that extra space would have been, but yeah, who yeah, knows? It it's gone now. Um, the middle on the left. Yeah. So your, your photo there is, is passing your clothes. Yeah. Like yeah. So did you notice anything from the stats for that one that made it stand out compared to the rest of the state? Um, not really. Um, that is definitely something I, I paid attention to, though, because it's really tricky to tell specifically what what drew the thing. Because there's so many variables between the time of day, the thumbnail, the title, you know, whatever whatever other people release at the same time. Like it's almost impossible to track exactly what makes someone click on a video kind of thing. But uh, as far as I was aware, I couldn't really tell a difference in in that one. I think that one actually did pretty well because um, I know like one after that didn't do as well. Um, so, but it's, it's, I don't know, it's something, that's something that you definitely need to really get into the nitty gritty of it to, to, to make any kind of judgment about whether or not the thumbnail worked. Cool.